Good morning and welcome to Do the Right Thing, the Apostolic and Prophetic Edition. Uh, I'm Lenny, I'm Dr. Lenny Swanigan, and Do the Right Thing can be seen every Sunday at 8 a.m. and also on demand at bgntvgospel.com. Again, this is the Apostolic and Prophetic Edition. Uh, our goal and our hope that is as we are talking about the subjects of the apostolic and the prophetic, that you would get informed, that you would get inspired, and that you would get encouraged. Uh, well, today we're going to do something very uh, special. I have a, a special guest with us, and uh, he's going to talk to us and encourage us and just minister to us. So I have Chancellor Cersei here, and I'm just going to uh, turn it over to him and, and just let him share a little bit with us. Hey, how's everyone doing out there today? My name is Chancellor Cersei, as he said. I attend Judah Evangelistic Ministries, where my pastor is um, Reginald Glenn. Um, today I'm here before you all because I wrote this book on evangelism. It's called 365 Day Soul Winning Quest. And what this book is about is in the year 2012, the Lord led me on a quest to minister to a different person every day of the year. Um, you know, in spite of all the differences and all the troubles that we all in, endure on an everyday basis, um, I still went forth and completed this quest. Yes, I did face a, a bunch of trials and a, a bunch of hiccups, but glory to God, I still pressed forth and I still completed this quest. After the quest was completed, the Lord led me to write a book about it in the hopes that it would encourage people, strengthen people, and just really encourage people um, and teach them how to effectively spread the gospel. Awesome. Awesome. So when did you do this? Um, the quest took place in 2012. Okay. And so um, every day. Yeah. Every day. Every day you, you know, God put somebody on your heart and you... You minister to them. Can you tell us a little bit, give us a few examples of what happened and anything that stands out in your mind as you talk about your 365 quest? Well, um, absolutely. Um, I've always been a person um, after God's own heart, really, really firm on evangelism. I do believe that evangelism is the heartbeat of the church. I do believe that evangelism is key to, um, to kingdom work. I really do. Um, you know, before there were churches, there was evangelism. So I'm very, very serious when it comes down to uh, ministering to God's people. Um, a few examples from the book. On um, this one example, in here, um, I was sick. I'll never forget this day. I was sick, and I was um, I had a, f a fever or something, and I had the chills. It was late summer, probably around like July, August, and I was cold. I'll never forget I was cold and I was in the bed and I had chills and my wife told me just to stay in the bed because um I know you're sick, you know, just wait, wait until you get better. And I say, no, I got to go out here now. It's nine o'clock at night. I haven't ministered to anyone. And um I got up out of bed <laughs> against her will. I got up out of the bed and I went to Meyer. Um, if you live in Michigan, I'm pretty sure you know what Myers is. It's a local grocery store. Well, it's a huge change, chain of grocery stores. And I went there, and I found this guy in the parking lot pushing buggies. Wow. Um, I'll never forget. He had on shorts, shorts, and a short sleeve shirt. And when I had it was oh, summertime, it was summer. summertime, okay. around like July and August, okay. and I had on a coat, a jacket. I'm out there freezing. With a coat on, and he has on shorts. He's he approached me and said, "What's wrong?" You know, and then I approached him with Jesus, and I said, "I'm just out here, and I want to tell you about Jesus." And um, he gave his life to Christ. He received salvation. So, you know, that's one example of of just how I um, always pressed forth, how I was always determined to do God's will and determined to minister to a soul a day. Okay. Oh wow. So. How many people do you think throughout the, um, when you did this, the 365, how many people do you think got saved over the course of that year? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I ministered to almost 800 people. Um, how many? Almost 800 people. 800. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm so 800 people you shared the gospel with? Yep. Eight, oh, wow. Yep, almost 800 people. Um, 
and people who actually receive Christ, um, I would have to say probably, probably about half of that. Oh, about wow. half of that. People receive Christ. Um, yeah, about half of that. Okay. Four or five hundred. Now, what do you think was the most dramatic, like, uh, that happened? Um, <laughs> well, it's it's filled with a bunch of deliverances, um, healings, testimonies. Uh, give me one that was just, give me one that was just really dramatic. Um, you know. Okay. Um, give us a little sneak peek before we uh, read the book. So. Okay. Um, well, we encountered this. Um, this woman in Northland, uh -huh. and she had, she had in, well, she was walking with a limp, you know, and her, her arm was stuck in a um, parallel um, position, if you can say. It was stuck up, and, and she, she was walking with the limp, and so me and, and my brother in Christ, Dorian, Dorian Harvey, Minister Dorian Harvey, we had approached her, and we said, hey, ma'am, how you doing? You know, mm -hmm. do you believe in Jesus? You know, what's wrong with you? And she told us she had had an aneurysm on the whole right side of her body years ago. And she um, had just been uh, stuck like that to the point to where she was struggling. And so I, um, me and Minister Dorian, we said, well, do you believe in the power of prayer? Do you believe that God can heal you right now? You know, how many people know God is a healer? Yeah. So we asked her, we said, do you believe God can heal you right now? And she said, yes, I do. So we began to pray and pray and pray and pray. And that's all I'm going to give you. <laughs> you got to read it to find out the rest. So we got to get the book to find out the rest. You got to get the book to find out the rest. So what do you think of the state of the church when it comes to uh, evangelism? Um, sadly to say, I do believe that a lot of churches are um, stuck with the with just the complacency of being in the four walls. You know, um, I do believe that before you're called to be an apostle, before you're called to be a teacher, before you're called to be a minister, you are called to evangelize. Um, it's the first instruction Jesus gave to his disciples. He instructed them to go out and spread the gospel. It's also the last instruction Jesus gave to his disciples, you know, the Great Commission. I mean, so I believe that, you know, churches need to get outside of the four walls, you know, to reach the lost. Jesus said in Luke 5 and 32, I came not to bring the righteous, but the sinners into repentance. So that's our goal. Now, I'm not saying don't go to church because obviously as Christians, we need to be fed that word. But I believe that it's a state of complacency to where we feel like that is where our Christian walk ends. But no, we were called first to minister. We were called first to evangelize and spread that word. Okay, good, good. You know, I'm in total agreement with you. I think that uh, we have to get back to basics. We have to get back to doing evangelism. And really, evangelism is God's heart. God cares for a sinner's God cares for for the loss, and 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 to be very honest, if not for the grace of God, where would any of us be if not if yes. someone took time to share the gospel with us and to witness to us and uh, and to really tell us of God's goodness? And we need to be doing the same thing as sharing the gospel. And I just have a scripture I want to read uh, to you. It comes from uh, the Gospel of Luke, the fifteenth chapter. And verse 8. I have to take off my glasses to read my Bible, but I need them to dry. Uh, and uh, so, so the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, and verse 15. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, do not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently to find it. And when she have found it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together and saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which was lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. You know, um, I believe heaven rejoices when 
people come to faith in Christ and people come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and just as this woman was, when she lost that one piece, uh, that one piece of silver, that she would uh, do whatever she can. She swept her house. She lighted, uh, lit a candle and looked and searching. And I believe the Spirit of God is looking and searching for, 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 for the lost and broken and bruised. And he is drawing trying to draw people to a saving knowledge of himself. And what God and what God desires is that you and I, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we would be laborers, that he could send into the harvest and give us divine appointments that we can share the gospel. And the Bible says, angels rejoice. Heaven rejoices over sinners coming back home and coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to just encourage you and we want to encourage you to get back to winning the gospel, get back to winning the loss and sharing faith in Christ. You know, a lot of times we use, you know, we and sometimes in the church, we use a lot of Christianese language, you know, God bless you. And, you know, we're just, you know, we, we, we let people know that we're, we're we're Christian, but we don't ever really go in uh, for the kill. And what I mean by the kill, I'm, uh, I don't mean that literally. But, I mean, have you, do we ever ask people, have you ever accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Can I pray with you? Can I pray with you to lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ? And uh, I really believe that we're living in a day where God is bringing revival to his church. And revival, when we think of revival, we think of souls getting saved. But revival is, is not just souls getting saved. Revival is God reviving us. In the church, sometimes we need to get revived. We need to get our passion back. We need to get our hunger back. We need to get our desire back. We need to repent. Absolutely. And, and a sign of revival is people are repenting. People are crying out to God. Yes. People are reading his word. People are, uh, people are going to church. And another sign is people are doing what you did, is evangelizing and sharing the gospel. And I believe that we need to get out. And, and share the gospel. Would you? Do you have any recommendations that churches can do uh, to get more uh, to get their people mobilized for evangelism? Uh, well, absolutely. Um, what I um, my recommendation is um, if you you know want me to come out and share my testimony about this book, um, I'm more than welcome to come out. I also do. Uh, a workshop. It's just a two-part workshop. If you want me to come out, I'll come out and do that also. Um, you, you can just email me at soulwinningquest at gmail.com. That is soulwinningquest, one word, at gmail.com. Um, but my recommendation is um, is that pastors start, start just really, really preaching about evangelism. I, I just do believe that, um, that it is key. Um, this book that I wrote, it's a, um, it's a really easy read. I have read other evangelism books and it's like step one, step two, step three. But this book right here is a hundred percent, um, ministry. It's a hundred percent, um, personal testimony, personal encounters. Um, not one person, not one time in this book does it mention me ever, um, ministering in a church ever preaching to anyone inside a church. This is all street ministry um, in the slums and stores, strip malls, um, on a cruise boat, I mean, gas stations, <clears throat> um, in the hoods. I mean, it is just 100% street ministry. Um, I do believe uh, the Bible talks about in 2 Timothy 3 and 17, the Bible says, says that the word of God is meant so that the man or woman of God can be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay. I believe that um, this book will definitely help you while out there spreading the gospel, while out there evangelizing. It will definitely thoroughly equip you. I mean, it just prepares you for almost every encounter. I mean... Like I told Dr. Lenny, I ministered to over 800 people. And obviously, it's not 800 <laughs> examples in here, you know. But I break it down by month. And I just believe um, it's an awesome read. Wow. What would happen if in the church we made a commitment to maybe once a week ministering to somebody or once every 
few days or once a month even to share the gospel. Can you imagine the impact uh, it would have? And that's actually, um, I guess you could say, a movement that um, we're on, me and my wife, um, we're calling it the Soul Winning Quest. So if you're out there right now, and like Dr. Lenny said, I obviously went on on a quest and I minister to uh, one person a day, just just one person, a different soul. And now you can't go, you know, minister to your same brother, you know, a hundred times, you know, <laughs> a different person every day. Um, sorry about that. And um, so and we're calling it the Soul Winning Quest. So like Dr. Lenny said, if Imagine if you have a church um, that's, that has 50 people in it, okay? And just if every person in that church ministered to one person a day, that's 50 people in one day, that's 1,500 people in one month. And that's um, what, if my math is correct, that's 180,000 people being ministered to. Is that correct? No, 18,000 people <laughs> being ministered to in one year. Imagine the effect that we can have on the kingdom of God. 18,000 people. But, you know, what the Soul Winning Quest Challenge is, or what I'm urging everyone out there today to do is not even go that extreme if you can't do it. Just make a vow before God to just stick with one person a week. Try mm -hmm. that, but you have to stick to it. You know, just one person a week. If you can't do that, let's just do one person a month. That's just 12 people in a year, okay? One person a month. Um, and just really make a vow before God to stick to this. As I said, this book would definitely encourage you and help you in that quest. A lot of people mm -hmm. really want to evangelize. I mean, I run into people who want to minister but just don't know how to minister. You know, if you're shy, you meet, you know, if you got that rude person sitting next to you at work, you know, or if you got that guy who's always asking the question, oh, no, um, is, is Jesus white and has blue eyes and blonde hair? I mean, this book will um, address all of those issues or at least most of those issues to help you out. And we want to hear about them. Um, my website is soulwinningquest.com. You can go on there. You can accept the challenge if you want. You can um, also um, post, post, yeah, I'm so-and-so. I want to accept the challenge. So just me and my wife know who to pray for. And, you know, we're also in the process of actually uh, making changes to the website to where you can actually comment and upload comments and testimonies on, on how your quest is doing. So... Good, good. You might ask, some people might ask, well, what does uh, evangelism have to do with the apostolic and the prophetic? And when you uh, understand the apostolic, apostolic, if you were really to break it down, is basically evangelism and discipleship. So at the heart of an apostolic and prophetic church is evangelism, a heart for winning souls, a heart for spreading the gospel, a heart for promoting the kingdom of God. And the Bible actually says this. It says, he that wins souls is wise. And listen, church, we have to get back to the basis. We have to get back to sharing our faith. We have to get back to leading people to Jesus. Amen. And, and there has to come that same hunger, that same desire, that same drive in us that we had when we first got saved, to share our faith and to tell people of the good news. The gospel is good news. It's hope for a better tomorrow. It's, it's, it's salvation. And people need hope in this day and hour. People need Jesus. Amen. And, and as New Testament apostolic and prophetic churches, let's tell people the good news of the gospel. Amen. So if people want to get your book, if they want to say, well, that book sounds good. I really like what you're doing and what you've done. And maybe I want to be a part of that. Where can they get the book at? Uh, the website is soulwinningquest.com. And once again, soulwinningquest.com. That is S-O-U-L-W-I-N-N-I-N-G-Q-U-E-S-T.com. You can go on there. Um, it's a big old picture of the book when you first log on. <laughs> just click purchase here. Um, and once again, you know, we, we would love to hear about your, your testimony and just how the book is really blessing you. Because I do believe that this book 
will bless many. I mean, when I first did this quest, it wasn't for any recognition at all. It was between me and the Father. And the Lord told me, you know, write a book about it because this book is going to encourage millions. It's going to impact millions. So, I mean, we would love to hear how it's impacting you. Good. You know, Paul said this, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe that uh, that God wants to raise up Christians who are bold in their faith, tenacious in their faith, tenacious in their faith, and aren't ashamed of the gospel. And and you, we know the world is very bold. The world will share their stuff with you and, and share their junk with you and share their mess with you. And we need to have boldness, a Holy Ghost boldness, to share faith in, in Jesus. So I, I hope that as a result of hearing this that you would get this book and that you would be inspired to tell somebody about Jesus. You know, uh, some of the churches we, we go into, my wife and I, we go in, and, and one of the common things we ask people is, when was the last time you shared your faith? When was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? Was it yesterday? Was it last week? Was it last month? Was it six months ago? Was it last year? When was the last time you shared your faith? As born again, spirit-filled believers, sharing our faith, and telling people about Jesus should be something that we're regularly doing. I want to encourage you, get back to evangelism. Get back to soul winning and telling people about the good news of Jesus. So apostolic and prophetic. You can't truly be apostolic and prophetic without having a heart for the lost. And not having a heart to want to reach out. So what we like to do is we want to just pray. And we want to just... Uh, I believe that, that that God will cause there once again to be a renewal and revival, uh, not just of uh, not just of people going to church, but the, but the people of God getting activated for evangelism and moving out. So, just want to just pray, Father. We just thank you. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that you've extended to us, Lord God. And Lord, you sent your Son Jesus to die for us. And he rose from the dead, victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Lord, people need to hear this message. Lord, I pray, Lord, that even as uh, those that are watching the broadcast and the churches and the pastors and leaders under the sound of my voice, Lord God, Lord, that something will be stirred and something will be activated in their hearts and spirits, Lord God. And Lord, there will be a move, Lord, for people to, to evangelize, Lord God. Lord, people to share their faith. Lord, I ask that you would give us divine appointments, Lord God, that you would bring people across our path to share our faith with, Lord God. Lord, that you would give us opportunities to witness the gospel. And Father, I pray that we would be open and sensitive to your spirit, Lord God. And Father, just as you did in the early church, Father, we pray that you would add to your church and that you would grow it, Lord God. And Father, we declare that we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. And Father, let there be a stirring and a move of your spirit, Lord God, Lord, in your churches and your people for evangelism, to see people come to know you. Father, we bless you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing. Tell us one more time where we can get the book and, 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 and the website again, just to reiterate soulwinningquest.com once again it is soulwinningquest.com you can go and purchase the book there um it's only twelve dollars um that's it's very inexpensive when, when you look at the prices of a lot of other um books in general um all this is just to advance the kingdom um, soulwinningquest.com um yeah you can go there and pick up a copy of the book once again um if there's any pastors or any ministers out there who want me to um, come out and speak to their congregation i'm open for it um just email me at soulwinningquest at gmail.com that's soulwinningquest at gmail.com god bless you please go out and share your faith and tell somebody of the good news of the gospel of jesus christ
What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Vicky Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Vicki Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine, AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times. And you are watching Bell Global Network.